good? We're back in the Midwest with the snow. What's going on, everybody? Yeah. Come on in. Come on in. You're in the right place. Yeah, come on in. You're in the right place. How we doing? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Come on in. Have a seat. We're getting started. Come on, come on. Come on in. Grab a seat. Come on, come on. How's everyone doing today? Woo! Doing great. We doing well. Come on in. Come on in. I thought you said the rest of the class was sleeping. Playing hooky. Okay. We're another class. Oh, come on in. Welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. Jeff Garofalo. Today I'm going to teach you about the three skills. The three skills for successful practice. Okay. Are we here? Are we good? Let's talk a little bit about the three skills for successful practice. Let's get started today, okay? Let's find out who I am, okay? So we'll take the wig off. We'll take the glasses off. We'll take the cape off. I'm a WWE on the weekends to support my chiropractic practice. <laughs> and don't laugh because when I do get serious today, some of you might find out you are gonna have another job, okay? so. Let's talk about who I am. So there I am in the middle, that good looking bald guy right there. I had hair until I had a wife and kid in practice. <laughs> you know, and then I lost it all. All right, so who am I? My name is Dr. Jeff Garofalo, and I've been in practice for 17 years. And it doesn't matter what school you come from, because as long as you've got the passion for chiropractic, right, it's gonna wind up being there. I actually graduated from National University of Health Sciences. When I started, it was called National College of Chiropractic. And I still say I graduated from National College of Chiropractic, right? But I knew nothing about chiropractic when I started. I had no clue. I was led by God to chiropractic. I've been in practice for 17 years, and part of who I am is a teacher, right? So I learn a lot. I study a lot. I learn about business. I learn about chiropractic. I learn about technique. And everything that I've learned over the last 17 years has been self-taught, right? So the beautiful thing about Dr. Cordero is coming here and teaching you guys towards the end how to run a successful business. And so he asked me to come in, we've been friends for quite a while, and so he asked me to come in to teach you something. And this is my family, and I wanna show you that I live the chiropractic lifestyle. Because chiropractic just isn't snap, crackle, pop on the weekend or weekdays, and then I'm somebody else at night when I come home or somebody else on the weekends. It's actually a philosophy we live by. That's my wife, Angie. That's our son, Christian. He's already said he wants to come here. He's been here a couple times. He already said he wants to come here. So apparently I've got an application in my pocket from Dr. Ed. Yes. That's Tyler, Jonathan, and Natalia. And these kids, within 20 minutes of being born, were adjusted. 20 minutes, all of them. They've lived on nothing but chiropractic adjustments and herbs. As a matter of fact, we're so chiropractically based that this woman purposely gave birth to that little girl at home. Okay, did a home birth. So these kids are non-toxic. Okay, they're not polluted. They are pure kids. Been adjusted since birth and live on herbs and chiropractic. Now, have they had colds and flus and things like that? Absolutely. Have there been nights where we were scared, where my wife is nudging me, wake up, adjust the kid, the kid's got a fever, the fever goes away, I go back to sleep because I gotta be in the office for a busy day the next day, and an hour later I get nudged again? Absolutely. So who I am is a teacher for not only my family, because everything I learn in chiropractic philosophy, I teach them. As a matter of fact, I was gonna shoot a video, I just ran out of time, but I've taught these kids how to check legs and arms and make adjustments. As a matter of fact, we, we, we do it, but we play here, and this one right there is gonna be 15 in June. He's a hockey player, he's a big 14-year-old kid. A year ago, I actually started to train him to literally check and adjust me, and I will tell you what, he can adjust an atlas probably better than most of you. Why? Because he's got a dad who's been doing it for 17 years. And I'm going to show you some statistics in a few minutes to kind of let you know a little bit more about who I am from a practice standpoint. But this is it right here. This is the chiropractic lifestyle right here. My wife sometimes is even stronger than I am in the chiropractic lifestyle. Well, Jeff, didn't you just think of adjusting the person? Oh, yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Adjust them and let the body do its thing. Great. So I'm a teacher for my family. But I'm also a teacher for those that want to learn how to be a successful chiropractor because it's not easy. And there's multiple components. 
So when I had the opportunity to have Dr. Ed become president here, he started growing this thing. I said, man, he's going to produce some fantastic chiropractors. And then when he said, I'm putting in a business opportunity for the kids to learn business, I said, now these kids are going to come out way ahead of every other chiropractic student out there. And I'm just, we were just talking and I said, listen, there's over 400 associateship positions, doctors looking for associates on just planet chiropractic. Now we are looking for some great <coughs> team members, but I can't believe how many chiropractors are looking for associates. But guess what? None are gonna come out like you because not only will you have the attitude and the adjusting skills, but you're gonna have the business skills and that's real important. So who am I? Well, there I am. You know that guy? Anybody know this guy right here? Or that guy? Anybody know that guy on my wall? See, I have a picture, it says Legacy of Chiropractic, okay? The Legacy of Chiropractic. And I got DD here, and I got BJ, and I got Mabel, and I got Gonstead, and then who's that? He's a pioneer in chiropractic, and you got him right underneath your roof. He's a pioneer because all the schools have shunk away from chiropractic. They've shunk away from teaching you how to run a business. And the great thing about Dr. Cordero, and I'm so grateful he asked me to be here, and I thank you, is he ran a business for 21 years. And I've known him for 12 or 13. So there were many nights we were sitting together just talking about chiropractic and business. And I'm excited to share that with you. So this is my practice, okay, in Shipshawana, Indiana. Okay, Shipshawana, Indiana is in the middle of nowhere, Midwest where it snows. It's Amish country, okay? So let me talk a little bit about my practices. Who I am, three practices over a 17 year period from scratch, one in New York, after two years I sold it, I moved to Chicago. I was six figures in debt, had a wife, had a kid. I failed in, in New York, I failed. That's where I'm from, but I failed, but I learned a valuable lesson. And I'm gonna teach you some of those lessons today. I learned a valuable lesson, multiple lessons from that practice. Then I opened my second practice in Chicago and I was there for 13 years. And then about a year and a half ago, we got the calling from God to move it along. So I actually listed my practice and you know what? Successfully sold a volume practice. And it was phenomenal. I gotta tell you, the day we signed the papers and that money hit my account, it was a great day, <laughs> right? And then, then in March, a year, it'll be a year in March, I opened up from scratch a third practice. We bought a building, we remodeled it in Amish country, and I started in the last year, from here down, it's from the last year, between last March and this March, Within the first three months, going from what I've taken over time and learning, put it into my third practice, I went from zero patient visits to 946 adjustments in one week. Myself and two CAs and an x-ray tech. 946 adjustments in one week. Just me. I've done over 300 adjustments in a day, five times in 2018. Okay? I've given over 360,000 adjustments in the last 17 years. How is that even possible? How, well, because I'm going to teach you some skills today. Number one. Number two, how do you know the numbers? Because if you're a good business person, you run your business on stats and numbers. So I can, I can, you say, come to my house, I'll go back, organize, and thank goodness for my wife, because she's the massively organized one, and I'm the big vision guy who kind of organized and then makes a mess everywhere and she cleans it up. But I can take you back to 2011 and show you all the tax returns, show you all the sign-in sheets. I'll show you everything from that year because you must be organized in practice. So over 360,000 adjustments in the last 17 years, <coughs> over 1 million in collections in a year in both an insurance practice and a cash practice. So I, I know what it takes for an insurance practice and a cash practice, but the most important thing is this, I put many smiles on not only my family's face, but on family's faces that have seen miracles with pure chiropractic. Now this is all about my ego. No, it's not. The reason I'm doing this is because I've been around a long time and I've seen lots of people get up and talk to students and talk to doctors. I've been, parts of, I've been part of many practice management groups and I've seen Facebook and I've seen all this. And I'm just gonna tell you, there's a lot of people out there who are gonna give you advice who have never done a thing. They've never done a thing. They've never seen 100 patients a week and they're gonna tell you how to run a successful cash practice at 500 a week. They've never done it. And I tell you what, it's the biggest pet peeve of mine, and I can see right through people when they say that, when they do that stuff. So I want to share with you, I'm not putting up this, this isn't for me, okay? This is not for me. This is for you to know that what I tell you today is tried and true. Remember, I failed in my first practice. Does anyone here, anyone here, raise your hand if you failed in your, in your life? Raise your hand. And if you've had a wife and a kid to support, and you could hardly even support them, 
do you feel good about yourself? So here's the thing, I failed in my first practice and I took all that learning over the last 17 years and I've designed this, not only for my kids, because I want my kids to know this, and we talk like this to my kids, my kids have seen this talk, but also for you and anybody that comes through Sherman College when Dr. Cordero is here. I'm here for you. So let's, let's get into it here. Does anyone want the truth? Okay, everyone want the truth? Are you sure you want the truth, right? You can't handle the truth, right? Are you sure? If you want the truth, raise your hand. If you want me to sugarcoat it, raise your hand. Then here's what I need you to do, Dr. Head. I want this half of the room, you included, stand up. Stand up, if you want the truth. You sure you want the truth? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then here's the truth in business, ready? Half the room who stood up, half the room, is gonna be out of business in three to five years. Ooh. Half this room right here, right here, will be out of business in three to five years. That's the other half. Yeah, you're there. Right. Right. Oh, Dr. Ed's there. The half that's sitting down. You can sit down. But I want you to see that. I want you to see what half the room looks like and the truth. The truth is, in three to five years, half of you will be out of business. And you want to know how I know that's true? Because in three to five years from now, you go look on LinkedIn and look at some of your classmates. And I've done that. I do that weekly. And I look at my classmates who are now drug reps, who are now working in some weight loss clinic, who are now RNs. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, but they went to school to be chiropractors, and now they're not. 50% of small businesses go out of business in the first three to five years. And that's the truth. See, the thing is though, I'm not here to scare you because I wanna help you change those odds. I wanna help that. And we can help that. And by Dr. Ed holding classes like this, by having business classes and real people come in to give you guidance, if you just follow it, right? Easiest thing to do is follow those who've succeeded and you get success. I want to change those statistics, especially for chiropractors, right? Because out there today, out there today, there's lots of non-chiropractic. I run a chiropractic subluxation-based practice, right? That's what I run. So we're very successful at it, and I want to show with you some skills today. Are you ready? Are you sure? Okay, you want the rest of the truth? Then the rest of the truth is, with the skills I'm going to share with you, we can help reduce that number. So let's talk about the three skills. The first one is attention. Skill number one is you must learn the skill of attention. You have to grab attention. You have to grab it, right? Me in a crazy outfit standing in the front of the room, why did I do that, right? Some of you hated it. Some of you, I walked in, you went, what the heck is that guy all about? What a whack job. Some of you loved it, went, oh, I get it, that's awesome. That moron up there is standing out. And some of you didn't know what to think. What is going on? See, it doesn't matter because the key is I got every single one of you to do what? Pay attention to me. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a busy world. How do we know it? Because people on the road are looking at their phones. Today, in today's day and age, there's so much coming out of human being now than it was a decade or 15 years ago. You have so many people online, on Facebook, all over the place. How are you going to stand out? How are you going to stand out? Some of you might open up and you might have six chiropractors on the same block, which I've done. I mean, I, I was in a, it was in New York, my first practice. I had chiropractors all over the place. How are you going to do it? You've got to get attention. You've got to get attention. You've got to stand out from the crowd and whatever it takes mentality to drive your business to success. Right? I've gone from zero to a million back down and up and down and sold, so I've done it all. And I'm telling you, you have to have people's attention. Now, how are you gonna get their attention? Just some ways to do it, the internet. The internet's a great way to do it. You know what, I fought it for a long time. I fought it for a long time and then I realized, you know what, if every single person's got a phone and they're getting into car accidents with their phones, they're paying attention to the phone, the internet, they're on the internet. And then, just this year, I said, you know what, I'm gonna try something out. I'm gonna do Facebook, I'm gonna do um, uh, Instagram, and I'm gonna follow another mentor of mine. I'm gonna follow some of the stuff he's doing. And so I started creating some content. 
I create content, 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 right? So before you leave today, if you wanna know my social and look me up and start following and start learning because I teach, I teach, you'll hear that in a moment, you can grab my social. So what I discovered was mind blowing to me about two months ago. Do you know how many 65 year olds are on Instagram? Shocking to me, shocking. Instagram, I went, no way, no way. Do you know how many 65 year olds are on Facebook? So what I start to do, I start making more content, 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 content. I'm gonna stand out because nobody in my area that I move to is doing anything or what they're doing is nothing compared to what I'm doing. So I'm gonna grab attention today and do what they won't do. Because wearing a clown costume, if that got me one new patient, I would do it. And some of you wouldn't, and those are the people that are gonna wind up going out of business because you have to do whatever it takes that's ethical to get attention. Because if you don't, what was that word? Ethical, somebody else will. So the internet is a fantastic place to start Facebook, Instagram, and do it now. Start building your persona. But when you hit the internet, you better be an expert. Because if you're not, if you're one of these guys who's teaching people how to run a million dollar cash practice and you don't even hear your student sitting there, you're in trouble at some point. So you have to be an expert in what you talk about. So the internet is a fantastic place. Writing, 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 writing. Every week, just so you know, to have a successful business, which could be a chiropractic practice, takes a lot of energy and effort. Every week I write what's called the article of the week for my practice. Every week I write an article for my practice and put it in there and I hand it to every patient. I hand it, I hand it, I hand it. Why? Because it's simple education and teaching. Now we might talk about chiropractic and heart disease and they go, well, my cousin has a heart problem. You think that might help? Well, I don't know. What's the article say? Bring them in. So writing, writing, weekly articles, monthly articles. I do a four-page mail, a newsletter to my patients. I write it. I take four hours every month and I write about family and I write, we direct mail this to our, our practice because what you need to also understand is you need to put a fence around your practice and your people because if you don't put a fence around them, somebody else is going to get their attention because what have we discovered? That people's attention, it's all over the place. So you have to work hard to cap encapsulate. So writing. Internet, writing, articles of the week, article blog posts on the internet. Write, 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 get in front of people. Direct mail, right? How many of you love getting a letter with your name on it? Raise your hand. It feels good, right? It's like a present, right? Show to people in your community. Put a nice little envelope together, nice pretty little envelope, urgent. Must open now, just for you. And then write a little story about who you are, invite them into practice. Just open it, come see me. So direct mail is a great way to do it. And then door to door. Listen, I left New York six figures in debt. For a moment, I had my tail between my legs and I got to Chicago in February of 2005. And I was 45 minutes from the town I practiced in. And I knew deep down that I could do this. I knew deep down I could do this. February, 2005, Chicago. Warm place, would you say? Nope. Kind of cold, right? Didn't stop me because I want to be successful. I literally had the strip mall where my office was being built and right behind there were 3,000 homes. What do you think I did? I put my trench coat on, dressed up and knocked on doors. I'm Dr. Jeff, I'm opening up over there. 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 See, it's not below me to get out and advertise myself, right? I think BJ said something to the, uh, along the lines of, if you don't get out and sell your practice today, meaning yourself, you will have your practice for sale tomorrow. So go door to door and let people know who you are. Don't get caught up that I'm a doctor and medical doctors don't do this, so chiropractors shouldn't do this. You know what? Medical doctors make the worst business people. Because I'll tell you what, if I was a medical doctor, I'd be worth $100 million right now because the pharmaceutical companies and the hospitals bring you new patients. And the whole entire game of practice is new patients. How can you get enough attention to get people in your office? Because that's what it is. Without bringing new patients in, who are you gonna tell your story to? You're gonna wait for the phone to ring and that's the challenge is most people will sit there and say, I have my license, I put my name out there, my name's in the paper, people are coming. Guess what, they're not. Because there's so much going on out there right now that you have to grab their attention. And what I mean, it's a verb, grab their attention, okay? Lectures, 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 lectures. I've been doing this for 17 years. 
I still give a every month new patient lecture. We serve dinner, we bring new patients in. I can't tell you, when you tell the story at the new patient lecture, that's where the referrals start coming in. So every month I do a new patient lecture and then we add in lectures every month. Every month we're talking, why? Because I wanna get content out there and I wanna grab their attention. I don't wanna stop, okay? Screenings. A lot of you, again, are gonna shy away from this. Well, the farmer's market, that's demeaning for a chiropractor to stand there. Great, well, have fun doing something else. Because if you don't get out there at things like farmer's markets, I'm just going to tell you, I had some of the most incredible patients come from farmer's markets when I'm standing, it's blazing sun on a three-day farmer market, and I want to hang out with my wife and kids. But I go, you know what? I tasted what poverty felt like. I tasted what it was like to not be successful in business. So it was worth it for me to stand there at screenings and say, hi, my name is Chiropractors Kill People. Have a nice day. Hi, my name is Chiropractors Hurt People. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Dr. Jeff. Which one of these do you suffer with and I can help with? Well, I got low back. Oh, come on over here. 13 years later, I sell my practice. She's crying because she's been with me for 13 years. Do the economics on 13 years of a patient paying you weekly, and then do the economics on the relationship you built. She's crying. She goes, I started with you when I was 50. I'm 63. You sold practice. I'm healthier today than when I was when I met you at 50. So if you don't think screenings are where you need to be, you need to be out there. You're not too good for it. Okay? And the last thing is this. What the other schools don't realize is you, you have an advantage. Because you have a president that uses this word and teach you about subluxation. Subluxation is an attention getter. Why? Think about it. Every other school is moving away from it. So what do you get to do? Move into it. Because now you're the only doctors who use a word called subluxation. And now you get to explain it, which makes you automatically different, which makes you get attention. So just using the word subluxation is key in getting people's attention. Use it and use it and use it and use it and teach and use it. And guess what? You'll talk to the same person and a year later, they'll go, submarine, you'll go, subluxation, I told you a thousand times this year. It doesn't matter because subluxation is the attention getter for a chiropractor. And the other schools don't realize it, you do. Communication is a second skill. You must have communication. How many of you married, raise your hand. How many of you don't communicate with your spouse? Raise your hand. How many of you didn't communicate with your spouse? You get in some trouble. Raise your hand. Communication is key. And this is where people lack. So now you get their attention and you get them into practice. And now you dwell it. Because you have no idea how to communicate. Communicate means you need to speak with them. You need them to not only speak with them, but you need to connect with them. And you need to connect with them with their four or five senses. That's communication, right? So what I mean by this, you use the four senses and I will tell you, we use our fifth sense in my office because I take care of lots of Amish and they love popcorn. So we give out free popcorn every day. I have a real popcorn machine and we hit their fifth sense, popcorn, right? I did my research and realized they love popcorn. So Dr. Jeff makes popcorn in the room with the kids and then we serve popcorn out in the reception area. So I use the fifth sense, but you wanna use four senses, sight, hearing, touch, smell. So every time they smell that smell, they go, oh, legacy chiropractic. But they're in the department store. That's communication. You want to use props because remember, there's kinesthetic people. People learn by touching. People learn by looking. People learn by hearing. People learn by smelling and tasting. So you have to, in practice, this is just not, I want to go out and crack backs and, and this is not that. You're going to make a difference in people's lives, but you also run a business. And it's a little bit more complicated. You need to think, think of things like this. When you're at a patient interaction, you get them in, but how are you going to get them to communicate to understand what you need them to understand? And you've got to use the four senses or five, okay? Tone of language is super huge. What's your name? Lance. Lance, um, would you like to come back on Wednesday? Yeah. Uh, probably not. <laughs> Lance? You got a great adjustment today, but I need to check you on Wednesday. I'll check in on Wednesday, okay? Okay. What's the difference? Tone. Tone and authority. Tone of voice. You gotta be careful of your tone and language in practice, right? Because some patients will come in just to challenge you. And then you gotta come up with tone. 
I'm sorry, Mary, we don't do that in practice. You know what, I'm not for you. You need to head somewhere else. Lance, would you like to come out on Wednesday? Who's the doctor? Lance, your x-rays do not look good. I'm glad you chose to correct the problem. I'm gonna check you Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You got a great adjustment today on Monday. I'll see you on Wednesday, okay? There's a difference there. Then, hey, um, would you like to come see me? So tone of language is huge in communication. You gotta understand that. Again, you smell, touch, use simple language. The average, okay, the average, the average person literally learns at a fifth grade level. I'm not saying they're stupid at a fifth grade level. I'm saying in order to communicate and get them to agree with you, because that is what you need, agreement. You can get them in the door, but you've got to communicate to get agreement for them to continue with care. So for them to get agreement, they have to understand you. And most people understand literally, they get it at a fifth grade level. What that means is they're not stupid. You're not stupid, but have you ever heard, oh, the light bulb went off? That's exactly it. You need light bulb moments all the time. All the time you need light bulb moments. And you need to speak at a fifth grade level. You need to do simple language, man. They understand at a fifth grade level. So you can put, uh, uh, make pictures and images with your words. Hey, um, Lance, a subluxation is like putting a rock on a hose and decreasing the water. What happens to the garden? Doesn't uh, get water as well. Yeah, right, so a subluxation is a bone out of place that pinches a nerve that decreases the life force. And what happens to the, the heart or the lungs? Well. Just like that garden, right? Yeah. You see how you can take a PhD and water it down so they go, yeah, well, that makes sense. And I can't tell you year after year after year. You, you got to make it simple. You got to explain at a fifth grade level. You've got to use images and pictures and analogies. A subluxation is like that bone in your back. That disc is like a pillow. If we have got a subluxation or a bone out of place and it pushes this way, what happens to a water balloon that way? Well, it gets full. That's what a bulging disc is, Mary. It's like a water balloon being squeezed in the wrong angle. Just by cutting with the scissors, Mary, that's not gonna fix it, Mary. If I just left it there, Mary, what do I do? If I had two plates and a balloon in the middle and it was squeezing this, what do I, I need to move the plate in the middle, right, Mary? Oh, I get it now. So you gotta keep it simple. But at times, ladies and gentlemen, you have to use big words, like neuroplasticity. You got to, because you still are a doctor of the spine and that's your specialty. The life force, the spine. Look, I don't know what people think they're crazy. Well, I'm just a chiropractor. It's subluxation, life force, and that's it. No, no, that's not it. You really are and need to be a specialist of the spine because that's where the life force comes from. So you got to understand the disc and the ligaments. you got to understand the biomechanics. And then you can talk the philosophy and the art. But you got to understand the biomechanics and the science. And sometimes it's relative to talk big words, especially when a patient wants to challenge you and their whole entire purpose is challenging. Well, Mary, you've got neuroplasticity going on in the ligaments there. You've got neuroplasticity going on in the brain. Um, you've got creep history to set going on, Lance, in those ligaments. That's why you're hurting. That's why when you tipped upside down on the teeter-totter and you were there for 30 minutes, your back hurts and you can't stand up straight. Because the ligaments are like <laughs> silly putty. Do you know what silly putty is? I do. Yeah, yeah. Creep history to set. Let me explain that. Silly putty. If I took silly putty and stretched it, it would stretch, 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 right? And then at one point, what happens? It doesn't hold anymore. That's like your ligaments when you go upside down for 30 minutes, Mary. Please don't do that again. That's creep history to set, right? So you've got to use big words to communicate, but most <coughs> of the time you want to be simple. And please remember this last one. Please, please, please remember this one. Take people where they are and move them to where you want them to go by accepting them for their choice and never make them wrong. Make their decision their decision, then communicate your ideas. I can't tell you how many chiropractors in practice have filled my practice, or how many practice management doctors out there are teaching. If you don't do it my way, it's the highway. Listen, get real, right? You're just throwing business out the door, and I can't tell you how many patients I've had come from other chiropractors like that, who go, no, 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 I just come when I hurt. And I go, okay, well, let's take a look at an x-ray. Oh, okay. Yeah, an no, I never had an x-ray, I just come around, oh, okay, I'm just here for pain relief stuff. Okay, let's take an x-ray. And then I put the x-ray up and I show them their x-ray compared to normal. And I say, this is why you're on and off, and this is why it can happen for the rest of your life, and this is what you're shutting off. Well, what can I do? We can correct this. We've got a program to correct this, Mary. Oh, you do? But not only that, they might say, no, I don't want to correct it. Okay, not a problem. They might come see you once a month, once every month, once every six months for three years, and then all of a sudden go, you know what, I'm tired of this game. What can I do to fix this? 
So never, never, never make them wrong. Lance, you know what? I, I, I agree. You know what? I used to think that way. See, I wouldn't say, Lance, you're wrong. I don't think that way. I say, Lance, I agree with you. I used to think that way until I understood what prevention was all about. I'd rather prevent it than actually have to go fix it after screwing it up for some time. So I understand where you're coming from. See, gain communication, gain relationship, gain agreement. Never make them wrong, especially if it's a mom and her kids. Never make them wrong. They will, they will hammer you and they will go and tell everybody about you, right? The deal is, you make them happy, they're gonna tell a few people. You piss them off and tell everybody, right? And here's the other thing you need to understand in communication, okay? That what you're communicating is, you don't just wanna communicate the value that they give you. An adjustment is $30, they give you $30, you give them an adjustment, have you made them happy? No, you just gave them what they paid for. If you gave them less than $30, then they're, they're mad, they're gonna tell everybody. If you give them more than $30 through massive communication, here's the article of the week, here's the newsletter, we're doing a lecture. If you give them more than $30, then they go and tell everybody. But make sure you never, never, never make people wrong. Some of you are gonna come out of here and you're gonna say, this is my technique. I only do this. And guess what? I'm sorry, but you're probably not gonna make it because not everyone's built for that. So you're gonna to have to learn a variety of techniques to communicate, okay? You have to learn a variety of techniques to communicate. So, the last one is called leverage. You need to leverage your connections, leverage who you are, and what type of practice you wanna be. Your skills, your mistakes, your people, and your opportunities. This is a big one. Not everybody here is cut out to own a business. You just sit there and go, I wanna adjust people, I'm a chiropractor, I should open my own practice, and that is not true. So you need to know who you are. You need to understand, you might just wanna adjust patients, but you don't have to deal with payroll, and staff, and marketing, and, and all this other stuff that goes with running a business. So you have to leverage who you are and say, you know what, I think I just wanna be an associate, but a darn good associate. You know, I do wanna open a practice. You know, I wanna go here, I wanna go there. You have to know who you are and leverage that. And you have to leverage your mistakes, your people and your opportunities. But you have to leverage your mistakes right here. See, I can't tell you how many times I built the system I built in my practice now to see volumes of people because I leveraged my mistake. I'll give you a real example and then we're gonna finish up here. In Chicago, huge insurance state. Huge insurance state. I get there in 2005, 2006, I start getting phone calls. And I was in network with one company, I was out of network with the rest, and I get these phone calls. Ring, 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 hey, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do you accept my insurance? No, click. Five times in a row, I go, that's not good for business. That's a mistake. Ring, 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 uh, do you accept my insurance? Bingo, light bulb, fifth grade. We're not in network, but we will get your in and out of network benefits and accept you as the OVR, are, so there's no difference in pay. Oh, really? I'd like to make an appointment. Oh, that worked. Leverage your mistakes. Sit down, learn, and listen from your mistakes. So leverage your mistakes. If you are the guy, the girl, to go into practice for yourself, God bless you. But it's gonna be an uphill battle, and you're gonna to have to leverage your mistakes because you're gonna make them, but leverage them and use them. That's what I did that made me so successful today. And then leverage your people and opportunities. Leverage me all day long. Leverage me all day, Dr. Ed's leveraging me to come in and talk to you, I'm leveraging him to get in front of some great people because I do have an opportunity for people. Leverage me, email me, call me, check me out. I'm here for you. So leverage people and opportunities because you must leverage them quickly because if you don't, it might pass you by. My social, Facebook, expect, I don't see expectamiracle.com, Instagram, Twitter, there's my website. And I have a free newsletter, an email newsletter for practice and business chiropractic tips. If you like my social, Lance, you'll do me a favor, just pass those out. If you like my social, I'm gonna keep warm just in case I run out. Thank you, Lance. My cards are up here if you like my cards. And if you'd like to be on, again, I'm not selling you anything. I'm Dr. Ed's very good friend. I'm not leveraging, I'm not selling anything. I'm not a practice management guy. I've done that enough. I'm not selling you. I have no secrets to sell you after this. I'm just here for you. If you want to be on my newsletter, this is strictly for chiropractors and, and business people, you can just write your name on here. You can come up here and write your name right up over here if you want to, okay? 
Last slide before we're done, I do have some opportunities. If you want to come preceptor with me, you can come preceptor with me. I have a 5,000 square foot clinic. I'm seeing about 500 patients a week right now. Okay, was it 900? Slow down a little bit, I'm about 500 a week right now. If you want to come see how things run, let me know. We do monthly tours and we have a learning center in practice. Come hang out for a couple of days, learn, tour it, see how we run it. I also have associateship partner, associate partnership opportunities. So I am not here to just run you into the ground as an associate and then take all the profit. That just doesn't work. I've seen plenty of friends and plenty of chiropractic offices do it, it just doesn't work. So I'm looking to expand. I'm looking to bring some great talent into my office, teach you everything I know, and then expand into multiple offices. So the way we're gonna do that is an associate <coughs> partnership. Partnership is the key, which means you're gonna earn some money. If you're interested, you can come see me, you can email me, go through social, you can uh, email me, you put your email name on there, put your email on there, and then I'll email you and you can email me back. Or tonight, I'm gonna to be at the DELT meeting on campus at the Student Center with Dr. Cordero. Come talk to me, come ask me questions. Give me your card, I'll give you my card, we can wrap. But I am looking for some great people to be a part of a great mission we have going on in Legacy Care Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.